like to thank Oscar for that warm introduction. I'd like to thank everybody coming out this morning in support of this fight. And I'd like to thank Pascal and his team. It's been, they've been very gracious. It's been, it's been wonderful since we got to Canada. They treated us with nothing but courtesy and respect. And, and we appreciate that. Uh, when we talk about Bernard Hopkins, I mean, what are we going to tell you that you haven't heard or you don't already know? You have fighters, you have champions, you have the elite level, and you have guys that are special. Usually in boxing, most of you who have history in boxing, you know, you have to reinvent yourself. All you guys who came from the amateurs, they had to reinvent themselves when they turned professional. I have yet to see a professional fighter reinvent himself as many times as Bernard Hawkins. He's to the point now where he's actually fighting in another era and surpassing most of the young guys. I said it before and I'll tell you again. A promoter, a manager, nor a trainer can tell a fighter how they're gonna respond when they look across the ring. Excuse me. And they don't just see a fighter, they don't just see a champion, or they step up fight to 10 rounds, or they step up fight for their first belt. They look across the ring and they see a legend. That everything that they've dreamt about in boxing, that guy across the ring has done already. The fighter can't tell you how he's going to respond. He's making assumptions. I'm going to do this, I plan to do that. A lot have. But nobody knows until they reach that point. And we have seen fighters break and crumble behind that pressure. Pascal is an athletic athlete. I've watched him. I remember him making the Olympics. He, he's, 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 he's a very talented athlete. And I'm not going to try to bamboozle you. Every advantage is on this side of the table. The advantage is hold with Pascal. The youth, the geography, you know, so, so, but, but he's going to understand it. Like we said, we found the Canadian people really understand boxing. See, there's a difference between liking boxing and understanding boxing. When you understand boxing, you appreciate it, but not often. When you like boxing, you go to the fight to see anybody get knocked out. You know, when you, I like boxing, I just want to see anybody go. <laughs> but when you understand boxing, you appreciate the small things you see Bernard doing when he's putting, when he's trapping you with his feet, when he's maneuvering you with his hips. These are the small things that I've seen champions not even develop. And they, they won belts and they still haven't developed those kind of maneuvers. You know, I hear people say that he's been, I've heard a lot of people say he's a dirty fighter. But what we happen to see a lot of times with the media, you've seen it, you, you watch the television about, and the commentators tell you what you're watching. They tell me, oh, yeah, they come back with the right hand, and he, that didn't land. You know, but this is what happened. The commentators have said dirty boxer so much, and now everybody's brought on to it. I've challenged people, show me the fight where you say this was dirty, or that was dirty. You know, what you're seeing is you're seeing a crafty veteran who's not going for the excitement, and just running out and trying to show, throw up a three-pointer. He's willing to work the defense and put the ball down in the lane. All right, so this is why I say appreciating why he's here because we keep trying to turn to these other young guys. I watched him with Chad Dawson. They wanted to make him a star. He wasn't. He was a champion. Everybody doesn't have that, that charismatic uh, athleticism in the ring to be considered a star in the sport. We're going to miss these guys. The two of these guys sitting up here, what they've done for boxing, every one of us is sitting in our living room and hooting and hollering and knocking popcorn over watching these guys. Okay, so this is an era that you have to appreciate. And like Mr. Michelle said earlier, you're going to tell your kids and your grandkids, I was there. When they see the posters, I was there. But we appreciate this young man uh, putting that challenge for it, and, and, and we accept it wholeheartedly. And we appreciate you good people coming out to support us. And, and support your guy. He, he's worth supporting. And, and don't turn your back on him just because he dropped one to one of the greatest guys that ever put on blood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the is on his side. He'll be right back. Like I said, he is the future of the game. Hopefully. Just, hopefully. This is the pressure. <laughs> this, this is the present and this is the pressure he has to deal with. You know what I mean? So, like I said, show him that love afterwards. And I thank <laughs> you for your time and your patience. Thank you very much. So for this fight, December uh, 18, uh, once again, Bernard Hopkins will make history. Uh, we were we were uh, we were thinking about how George Foreman 
uh, when he was 45 years old, uh, he, he won the uh, heavyweight championship of the world, knocking out uh, uh, Michael Moore. And uh, so December 18th, uh, Hopkins has that opportunity to beat uh, uh, George Foreman by a couple of weeks. So this is a tremendous motivation for a man who uh, really doesn't need motivation because that's what he's all about, is motivation and, and making history. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce to you with a record of 51-5 and five from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Bernard Hopkins. First, I'd like to say thanks to everyone that showed up. Um, to report and witness this press conference, also this upcoming fight December 18th. Also, I'd like to thank Yvonne Michelle for having the great hospitality uh, towards Golden Boy and real professional. Um, I know his side he's on, but he still is professional to give both um, my side, rather, uh, the respect that I've earned over the years. Well, although this is the first time that Golden Boy promotion is involved in the business of Showtime. It's not my first time being in the business of Showtime. I won my first world championship in 1995, a rematch that I would give Pascal after December 18th. <laughs> but on Showtime, I won my first IBF middleweight championship. Segundo Mercado, I was in South America, Quito, Ecuador, long way from Philadelphia and Toronto. <laughs> I'm home too. As I said to Yvonne Michelle in Montreal, <clears throat> anywhere I can drive is my home. <laughs> and I can drop to Toronto. <laughs> this won't take, what, 8, 9, 10, 15 hours? But I can get here by land, by driving. So I feel it's home too. My guy, Nazim, <coughs> my trainer, been watching me for over a decade. And when I seen Pascal fight Chad Dawson, I said to myself, of course I caught him, and said, you understand, not taking that away from his performance, great, massive performance. He had Chad Dawson dead headlights, waiting for him to stop. You don't do that. But I was told the other network, I'm not going to give him a commercial, but it's like, they spell a name by three letters. <laughs> I said, I beat this guy, it does nothing for me. The light heavyweight division since Myself and Joe Gazaki 40 years ago became what? A mystery. And I will wait around and take care of myself and maybe fight here and fight there, which I did. One in Philly and one in Vegas. And I'll wait until all this mess clear up and this confusion that the boxing fans is under right now, unfortunately. But once it gets some clarity, and some sanity, then I will come and I'll clean up whatever needs to be cleaned up. And now I am here. Well, y'all heard a lot of my 20-something years of press conferences over the years. Some good, some bad, some flags, no flags. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I am representing the old school boxer. When you talk about Archie Moore and you talk about Jersey Joe Walcott, you remember, some people in here I know by face, not by name, that did many, many reports on the old school throwback Bernard Hopkins. That was <coughs> 10 years ago. 10, 15 years later, now I'm representing y'all because y'all calling me old, some of y'all. <laughs> so then I fit into that glove as time went on. I was called old school at 35. I was called old school at 26. Now I'm representing by age that vision or that reality. But I tell you, he's not a Kelly Pavlet. Okay? Yeah, I'm telling y'all. This is legit. This is the I said yesterday I used the word king. 
He is the king of the light heavenly division. Because I want to dress him up just the way he earned it. Because when it's over, you will be foolish to say I'm not the man. Again, second time that rule this division until I leave permanently, then there's really no face on this division. Now, if you're looking at me as saying, you look at myself and saying, well, Bernard, you this and that, I'm not the average 45 year old. You take five years in the penitentiary, that was a lot of rest there, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you take ducking more than taking, okay? You take the way to live, I'm Muslim, so I know how to eat to live, I know how to take care of myself, I know how to take care of my well-being. You won't catch me out 10, 11 o'clock at night. That's not B-Hop, everybody know, but no happens, the executioner. Whatever title you give me, that's not me. I'm on the script. When the word perfect is used, you gotta use it when it comes to that with me. I'm telling you. Because this is what I do. It's a mystery to most of y'all because some of y'all are younger than me, no offense, and some of y'all a little bit older, but just say, Y'all know how y'all feel at 35, so he's 45 and he's boxing, he's considered old. But you're not me. What you did in your 20s and what you did in your 30s is the way you are now. Obviously, I did the right thing. So it won't be a surprise to me, y'all. I'm motivated by history. I'm here, y'all, because of history. Because history surpasses George Foreman, as Oscar said. History puts Bernard Hopkins now not only as a stamp or approval of the legend, not only as a stamp or approval of a Hall of Famer first ballot, but with about an icon. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take the orphans in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> It's been, you know, the third time in two days that I've heard uh, Bernard's speech. It's different each time, I'm telling you. And it's, more, as, more you know, <laughs> and it's as interesting and then each time. Oscar was telling me that he came to fight here once in Canada in 1988, and, he, and their team, the U.S. team, lost against the Canadian team then, but Oscar won his fight. What did he fight? Jerry Figler Manny. <laughs> yeah, you heard it. Before going, before introducing to, to Pascal Stein, I would like to introduce you the representative of the Quebec City. He's from Quebec uh, City Tourism. He's uh, the, uh, the uh, representative for the media, Mr. Richard Seguin. Well, 